Hi, this is Akiva from Twisted Tree Farm. Looking at European buckthorn here. And I think it's really important to be able to identify uh, all the plants on a piece of land that you're taking care of. So if you are making decisions, or if you're going to mow things, if you're going to cut things down, if you're going to dig things up, if you're going to plant things, it's really important to know what's already going on. Uh, not just to figure out um, what the land is, is telling you, but uh, also to understand the impacts you're having on wildlife that uh, already lives there. Anyways, uh, European buckthorn is, uh, by uh, many standards, uh, invasive, noxious weed. It's a shrub. This is a young one. It's about, oh, I'd say it's about four or five years old. It's the last time these fields were mowed. It's been about seven years. Um, but I actually love European buckthorn. It'll seed in really heavily. In some areas, you'll go, it'll just be thickets of it. I'm talking just a thousand stems in uh, a few hundred square feet. It's incredible what it can do. It'll really uh, dominate understories and forests in certain areas, and uh, it'll form its own thickets. And it'll get about 15, 20 feet tall. I believe the scientific name is Ramnus cathartica, and uh, it'll uh, make you puke. So if you eat these berries, which persist throughout the winter, see these black berries, they will definitely, uh, well, I don't know definitely, because I've never tried it myself, but I've heard they make you uh, puke and crap a lot. Um, identifying buckthorn, one way is these berries, but the berries are, are not always there. Uh, the plants are dioecious, meaning two houses, so there's male and females. Only the females are going to bear the fruit. Uh, another way to identify buckthorn is the buds are really interesting. So hopefully you're familiar with the term opposite and alternate. Check this out. Let me get my glove off. So this bud right here, you see that? Oh, sorry, I'm not very good with these cameras. Uh, these buds right here is uh, are opposite. They're growing one bud on one side and one bud on the other. But then over here, they're alternating. And buckthorn's the only tree I know of that'll switch. It'll be opposite and alternate. There's my dog trying to not let her run away. Um, and why would anybody care about buckthorn? It spreads all over, it's invasive, blah, blah, blah. But the truth is, it's actually great for wildlife. Um, th these berries are a serious winter food for a lot of birds and deer. If you uh, walk around big old buckthorn trees that are covered in fruit in the winter time, when there's snow on the ground, you'll just see a million deer tracks as they're eating all these uh, fallen berries. The other thing about buckthorn that I really like is the wood is incredibly hard. Once the trees get pretty big, um, you know, 15, 20 feet tall, they can have a nice stem, and the stem is uh, full of this red-orange wood. It's, it's almost like a fire color. It's one of the most beautiful uh, and also most dense uh, woods I've worked with. Uh, another identifying feature of buckthorn I forgot to mention is the thorns. They're, just, they're born on these little spurs. Some of the spurs are pretty long like this one, but some are pretty short like these, just a couple inches, and they hurt a lot. It's, it's uh, deceptively sharp, but, uh, but that's a glimpse at buckthorn, one of my absolute favorite invasive plants. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention is I've ripped out a lot of buckthorn in my life, and whenever I've pulled one up, I can not get over how improved the soil is in that one location. The fibrous, dense fibrous root systems are just incredible. It, I've never seen such a fibrous root system as that on buckthorn. And it really does affect the soil in that immediate area. So buckthorn coming in to unmowed fields, edges of woods, and even into some woods. Um, improving the soil, feeding wildlife. Crowding out other species for sure. Alright, buckthorn.